Hey everyone and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be talking about all the things that you need to know when it comes to your credit score. Now, a few days ago, I actually went online to find out what my credit score is. And I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed. I am someone that always prides myself in being quite responsible when it comes to borrowing credit. So I was a bit confused as to why I got a score of 888, which it is a score of good. However, it was just a score of good. A few points down and it would have been a fair score. So let's understand the fundamentals of a credit score and understand how we can improve it as well. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So what is a credit score? A credit score is basically a three digit number that indicates to a lender at how good or how bad you are at borrowing and repaying money. Everyone here in the UK has a credit score. So whenever you make a credit application, whether it be your mortgage application or an application for a new credit card, the lender will use this score to determine whether or not it is good enough to lend you the money at the deal you requested. Now the credit score number is predominantly calculated based on your credit history. Now these are things like how many credit applications you have made, how much you currently owe in credit, and how many credit products you currently have, and whether or not you pay them back on time. And there are other variables as well. Now, based on these factors, your score will be calculated and it will then be ranked into the following categories. You've got very poor, poor, fair, good, and excellent. And as you saw earlier, my credit score is currently sitting in the good category, but only just by seven points. One interesting point that I want to mention is that when we do start off our credit journey where we don't indeed have any credit history to derive this number from, we don't actually start from a credit score of zero. Now I did try to do some research into understanding what the default credit score is for everyone, but it's not very clear. But from what I do understand, it is somewhere sitting within the fair category. So why is the credit score so important? It's important because it has major implications on our financial future. As we progress through our personal finance lies we're at some point going to be requiring some credit to help finance some very big decisions one of the biggest ones being a mortgage application now if you have a poor credit score it's likely you'll get rejected when you apply for a mortgage the same also goes for a credit card if again you don't have a very good credit score you'll either get rejected from a credit card application or you'll only be stuck with credit cards that don't have the best deals and the same goes for any other personal loans as well such as financing for a car if you want to get a phone contract it also has some implications on your car and home insurance as well so to ensure that we get the best deals when it comes to borrowing these credit products we have to make sure we have a good credit score for us to be able to do this that is why it is so important now to find your credit score, we actually have a number of ways to do this. We have three major players in the credit reporting industry. They are Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. As Experian is the largest out of the three, and it's typically what companies tend to use when trying to find out your credit score, I would suggest them being your first port of call when trying to find out what your credit score is, and then go to Equifax and TransUnion after. Now to find out what your credit score is, it's completely free to do so. All you have to do is create an account with Experian, and they will then tell you what your score is is and this score is then refreshed every 30 days. Now with the free service you're not actually going to find out what is personally driving your credit score numbers. So if you do log on and you're a bit like me and you see that your credit score isn't as what you are expecting, you can choose to sign up to Experience Credit Expert Service where you'll be able to get the latest information on your credit score and also delve in to find out what are the factors driving this score too. Now this is a paid service of £14.99 per month, however Experian do offer a free trial for 30 days on the first go. And that is exactly what I did. When I found out that my credit score was on the bubble of a good score, I signed up to the expert service using my free trial and I was able to understand what was driving those numbers. Now let's go over to the Experian website and figure out how it breaks it down for you. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate if you smash that like button and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. Wonderful, so now we are on the Experian homepage and you can already see actually that my score has already improved since my first recording to 966. But let's first go over to the understand your score section to really understand what is driving those numbers. Cool, so here on this page, it kind of gives you an idea Idea of how the data influences your score. So each factor is ranked as either low risk, moderate risk, and high risk. Low risk meaning that lenders would be confident in granting you credit
credit at their most competitive rates. And high risk being the opposite, lenders may be concerned about your ability to repay credit and so may not offer you credit at all or at the worst rates. This is why I'm saying it's really important that we aim to get a good credit score and that means we need to aim for a low risk in all of the categories. So one of the factors is your outstanding balance on all of your credit products. Now I'm rated here at a low risk, that's because I have a relatively low total credit balance of just 84 pounds and that is only sitting on one account. Moving to the next factor, it's making your payments. This shows you whether I've made any late payments. As you can see, I'm proudly got a zero there. And on time payments, I've got 151. Again, marked as low risk, fantastic. So we've got a few more factors here, but the one that I really want to highlight is your residential information. And more specifically, whether you are registered to vote or if you're on the electoral roll. Now this one did confuse me slightly because I am actually indeed registered to vote and I'm on the electoral roll. So I wasn't sure why Experian wasn't picking this up in my credit report. I did some research online and apparently this is quite a common problem for some people in the fact that Experian or any other of the credit scoring companies don't actually update their electoral roll status. The only solution that I've kind of found is that I've since then registered to vote again, but that was about three weeks ago and it's still not appearing on my credit report. And from what I can understand, it's just a waiting game now. Let me know in the comment section down below if there is anything else that I can do to help speed up the process and get this information corrected because Experian do quote that they do offer up to 52 points for registering to vote. And I'm only 33 points away from the maximum. So I'm hoping once this is finally updated, I will manage to get to the full marks of 999 or at least get very, very close to it. And finally, if we scroll down to the very bottom of this page, you can see that you can download your full credit report and it literally has your entire credit history. My advice is to download this credit report and to make sure all of the personal details are in fact up to date with correct information. And if it's not, make sure you make those changes by contacting Experian directly or making those changes to your account online because any personal details that are incorrect can have some adverse effects to your credit score as well. So have a read through. It's really, really interesting actually, but make sure you are checking your personal details are correct and up to date. I also want to show you the score history page where it tracks what your score has been over time. Now mine starts only from the beginning of December, which is when I signed up to this premium service. But as you can see from the very beginning of the month, I started with a score of 888 and then it changed to 966. So if we go to 888 here, it tells you what the positive influence is. I've got a good average credit account age and the good amount of credit applications and I've only got one negative influence. And this is the fact that I'm not on the electoral roll. If we go to the very latest one of 966, I've now got five positive influences. And this includes now that I've got a good high credit limit, a good total credit balance and credit in use. Now, it is obvious that there is some delay in some information because there hasn't really been much change in my credit activity in between this time. So this is why I'm saying it's quite important to check your credit score on a regular basis, maybe every three to six months, but at least do it before you do any major credit applications as well. So how can we ensure that we keep a high credit score? Now, the first tip I can give you is to make sure that you are registered to vote and are on the electoral roll. Now, this should be very easy to do, but as I've demonstrated, there can be some delays and complications into getting that updated onto your credit report. However, it's still important that we do register to vote. I'll put a link in the description box down below to the government website on how you can do this. All you need is your national insurance number to fill out the form. If you are concerned about the borough selling your personal details, you can choose to opt out of the open electoral register, which can be used for marketing purposes. Now, ensuring that we are signed up should give us a whole chunk of points on our credit report. Experian actually quote that they can give you up to 52 points when you are registered to vote. And that is a big, big chunk. Now, if you're not eligible to vote here in the UK, don't worry, that doesn't mean you are automatically not eligible for those 52 points. You just have to make sure that this is actually being stated on your credit report so that lenders can see that you're not actually indeed registered to vote. Now, to be able to do this, you just need to contact Experian directly. I'll put a link in the description box down below for, on how to do this. All you have to do is provide your proof of residency and this should then be updated on your report. I'll put similar links as well if you want to do the same for Equifax and TransUnion. Now, the second tip to ensure that we always have a high credit score is to never miss or make a late payment. Now, this is probably the biggest sin when it comes to handling credit. Not only will you be financially 
actually penalised for missing or making a late payment, but you'll be sending a signal to lenders that you cannot be trusted in repaying back money that you have borrowed. I always suggest that you should always be paying off your credit card in full at the end of every month, because not only does that do well for your credit score, it also makes sense financially because you're not paying any interest. But if for certain months this is something that you cannot do, we should always be ensuring that we make at least the minimum payments every month. Now, if you don't trust yourself to remember at the end of every month that we need to pay off our credit card, I would suggest setting up a direct debit from your bank account to your credit card company to pay off the minimum payments at least. And then if you want to pay off your credit card in full, you can do that manually at the end of every month. But as long as we've got that direct debit paying off the minimum repayments automatically, we can be rest assured that we won't fall trap of missing a payment or making a late payment. Now, the third tip is that if you are taking out a joint credit product with your partner or a friend or a family member, make sure that they too also have a good credit score. Because unfortunately, if you take out a joint mortgage or a joint credit card or a joint bank account, even if you have a good credit score, if they have a bad one, unfortunately, that's gonna knock off some points from your own credit score as well. So make sure whenever you take out a credit product with someone else, make sure you spend some time looking at both of your credit scores to ensure that none of you will get negative impacted by the other. The fourth tip is to make sure all of your personal details are up to date on all of the credit report websites. The most common one that people fall for is that they don't update their address when they move house. So make sure any changes to your personal details are updated across all three reports. The fifth tip is don't apply for too many credit products in a short space of time. Now this is a bit of a catch-22 situation because the only way you will be able to really find out if you are eligible for that credit product is, is if you make an application to it. And if you do get rejected from one of your applications, this does hurt your credit score. So one way to get around this is to use free eligibility calculators that you can easily find from a quick Google search, but I'll put uh, links to a few in the description box down below. And this can actually tell you based on your current information, how likely or how unlikely you are to be approved for this credit application. Now for tip number six, if you are someone that unfortunately does have a bad credit score, all hope is not lost. You can actually get something called a credit building card, which are credit cards that are designed for people with bad credit scores and if used correctly it will help you restore some faith to your lender that you are now more responsible when it comes to borrowing money. Now please do take this as a word of caution when you do apply for these credit cards and you do get approved for them they do have crazy amount of interest rates attached to them so make sure that any money that you do borrow you can repay back in full at the end of the month that way you don't have to pay any interest but I repeat for these cards it it really, really matters that you do pay back the card in full at the end of the month. You can, of course, still make the minimum payments and you won't be penalized for missing or making a late payment. However, you will be charged crazy amounts of interests if you don't pay it off in full. So I repeat, pay it off in full. So that is all the information that you need to know when it comes to credit scores. In terms of how often you should be checking your credit score, my advice is to check it every three to six months or even at least once a year or before any major credit application such as a mortgage. In terms of getting the premium service, I only really think it matters if you do see a negative change to your credit score or if your financial situation is a bit more complicated and it's probably worth getting a report to make sure all your details are correct. Otherwise, I do think the free service is sufficient for the regular checks and you only use the premium service, which of course does come at a cost when you absolutely need to. Each of the three credit scoring companies do have a free trial for this premium service. So my suggestion is to utilize this free trial to make sure that all of the information that you have on these websites are absolutely up to date. For an extra free trial, you can actually do the same on a website called Check My File, which looks at all your personal details across Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian all in one go. And I believe their free trial is again, 30 days. I'll put a link to all of this information in the description box down below. So please do use these free trials to save you some money. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what you have done to try and improve your credit score. And also let me know if you had the same problem that I did in terms of the electoral role not being updated on your credit report and let me know if you managed to get around it and also if you found this video really useful I would appreciate if you smash that like button that does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel and of course I release a video every single Monday so if you want to keep up to date with those hit the subscribe button as well see you later